My husband, Kevin, and I got married months ago. Ever since we moved away, his mom started calling more often. She had a mental breakdown when she heard we were moving and begged we stay near because she needs him, though her two older sons are there. Anyhow, she'd call him at random times and then started calling in the middle of the night, specifically at 2 a.m. I thought that was so weird, but she said she wanted to hear Kevin's voice, but was too busy to call during the day. Kevin responds to her calls every time, saying he's worried there might be an emergency. It's exhausting and completely ruins our alone time. I asked her to call at like 10, but no, she kept calling at 2. Kevin said he couldn't bring himself to ignore her calls and asked that I be patient. Last night, I decided I wasn't having it. I waited till Kevin was asleep and put his phone on vibrate and waited for her to call. Two o'clock rolled around and the phone started vibrating on the nightstand. I stretched my arm to answer and then I started making ungodly noises from the bed. I'm talking full-on moaning and then some dirty talk, then moaning. A few seconds in, she ends the call. Kevin wakes up and asks if I'm all right. I tell him it's just the fever, then he goes back to sleep. I woke up to a complete disaster, with Kevin angrily asking what I did last night when his mom called. Clearly, she was livid and mortified, because Kevin said I just traumatized her by having her think we were having intimacy when she called. I told him what I did and insisted it was just out of frustration, but he said I shouldn't have done that embarrassed him and made his mom uncomfortable i said she was calling at 2 a.m he still said i acted childishly and potentially harmed his relationship with her i told him just to tell her that i was behind this and he said oh don't worry about it i will then demanded i apologize to her immediately but her shaming text made me refuse i might have gone about this the wrong way but i'm just frustrated that's all am i the idiot not the idiot it is your husband that needs to control this situation with his mother. Calls at 2 a.m. are unreasonable and in reality a form of harassment. Anyway, you wrote he was concerned it might be an emergency. He must be dense. Has it ever been an emergency to date? He needs to set and enforce boundaries. It will only get worse when you have kids. If nothing changes, try to drag your husband to a marriage counselor. OP, what you did was funny. It was kind of childish, but she's acting like a child. He has a bizarre relationship with his mom. That would have had me rethinking this marriage, to be honest. I hope he can see why this is not healthy. Drag him to therapy now. The guy has massive codependency issues. Everyone's the idiot. You're aiming your anger at the wrong place. If your husband didn't answer, you wouldn't be waking up every night at 2 because of his mother. You have a husband issue not a mother-in-law issue. And the more you're going to do that kind of silliness, the more he's gonna treat you like a child, like you're the problem. Disagree. She's not gonna stop calling at 2 a.m. and he's never going to make her. Good luck sharing your husband with your mother-in-law because she's never letting her baby boy go. Also, the people saying OP's wrong need a reality check. Mother-in-law should feel awkward for calling at 2 a.m. It's a power play to put you in your place and you turned that back on her, and she's livid because of that. OP, I love every bit of what you did to your mother-in-law. It was a healthy way of letting her know why she shouldn't be calling at all hours. I'm sorry he couldn't find the humor in it. She sounds like she needs professional help, and if your husband is truly concerned for her, he should get together with his other siblings and make that happen. He's an idiot for not setting boundaries. It's disrespectful to you, him, and your marriage to let his mother control your life in this way. I, 40 male, recently lost my father, 76. I have two siblings, my twin brother and older sister, 44. We all grew up in my parents' house. It's a large multi-story five-bedroom house worth almost a half a million dollars. My father's will stated that his assets, cash, house, etc., were to be divided equally among the three of us. While in town for my father's funeral, I asked my siblings when a good time would be to meet up about putting the house on the market. My sister told me there was no need because my father had sold the house prior to his death. I was confused because he was still living in it. My sister went on to explain that my father had been sick for years and was deep in debt, so he needed to sell the house. 
Of course, that would be a complicated undertaking with his health as poor as it was. So my sister and her husband bought the house so he could continue living there for free. I was stunned. When my father died, he only had about 120 k in liquid assets. Her story made no sense to me. I demanded details. She said that the mortgage lender would only approve them for 375 k which is far less than the house is worth. My dad spent the other 250 k paying off his debts, paying for treatments, and maintaining his quality of life, as my sister put it. So, basically, she's telling me my inheritance is 40 k and no more, while she gets that plus a house. I called her a thief that took advantage of our father when he was vulnerable. She basically pocketed the difference in the house's value out of my inheritance. She got really mad. She told me that she and her husband had been struggling to pay two mortgages for years while raising her four kids, not my kids, not my problem, and getting no income from the second house. But that was her choice. She got a house out of it. She started yelling at me and crying, so her husband intervened and took her away. I turned to my brother for support, but he just shrugged and said he couldn't find it within him to care about a house after we just buried dad. I miss dad too, and I hate fighting with my sister, but what she did was wrong. I've reached out to a lawyer and am planning to sue my sister, but I'm nervous. I know this will permanently fracture my family. I just want what's rightfully mine, but is it worth blowing up my sister's life? Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. The rest of your family is grieving while you're over here crying about your inheritance. You're selfish, entitled, and greedy. You cannot inherit property your father sold, even if you don't agree with the sales price. He made a considered decision to accept a lower price for the benefit of living in the home for free, having cash to use as he pleased, and having support in the form of his daughter, who actually seems to have cared about him, not you in other words. You are the idiot. Your dad was sick and in debt. Your sister and your brother-in-law took on another mortgage to purchase the house from him. They let him live rent-free and allowed him to repay his debt. Where were you in all of this? It sounds like you're only after a payday. Not the idiot. Sister needs to make a full accounting. It's suspicious that she didn't tell anyone and dad's will was not updated. LP said she bought the house for significantly less than market value. In this housing market, a home that size would sell for a substantially larger amount of money and free rent for a short time does not offset that. If she has nothing to hide, she should welcome an investigation. But right now, someone needs to make sure she didn't con a sick old man out of money. It's also suspicious that OP never asked if his dad was doing okay and then showed up to the funeral asking for money. The house may be worth half a million now, but it's not specified when the sister purchased the house. Since the house had been in the family for 40 years at least, there's a good chance that it needs some significant updates and repairs, which would lower the value if it were to be sold on the open market, as is. As long as he was mentally sound at the time, the sale of real estate is well documented and not really open for dispute. So I, 26 male, own my house with an in-ground pool. Since I live in a warm weather state, my friends love to come over. So my house has turned into a hangout spot among my friends in the past few months. My friend Tyler is dating Gwen. Gwen has a friend named Julie. We've all known each other since freshman year of college. I've always had a crush on Julie and we've always been part of the same group. One night a few weeks ago, I decided to just go for it and texted her to ask her out. She told me that she liked me as a friend. I told her I understood and thought that would be the end of it. Well, the next pool day came. I typically send out a giant group text to invite everyone. I decided not to invite Julie this time, but she showed up, not even with Tyler or Gwen. She came with some of the other friends in our group and it was just awkward. She tried talking to me the whole time. I'd say something quickly and try to leave. She partnered with me for every drinking game. We had never spoken that much even before I asked her out. After she left that night, I told Tyler and Gwen what had happened. Gwen told me she already knew. I told them that I didn't want her around anymore. 
Gwen said she would talk to Julie about it. Well, this past Saturday, I had another pool party. Similar thing. Sent out the text, left Julie off of it. I invited a girl that I've been talking to. Well, Julie shows up again, but this time she spent the whole day talking to the new girl I brought. They became besties. Julie even told the girl that I had asked her out before. It was just incredibly awkward for me. So this Sunday, I texted Julie individually and told her that I didn't want her around anymore and that she shouldn't come to the next get-together as I felt uncomfortable. She didn't respond, but now people in the friend group are calling me an idiot, saying that I host most weekends, so it's pretty harsh to put her out. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. I hate when guys shoot their shot and get upset when a girl politely rejects them. It makes it sound like if she doesn't want to be your girlfriend, then she doesn't get to be a part of the group, which is just gross. Julie doesn't want to date you, but she's making an effort to continue to be your friend. It's not her fault you never saw her as a friend. You let her on in that respect. How was she to know all you wanted was a date or a shag? You're now excluding her solely because you can't handle rejection. Not cool. You're punishing her because she doesn't reciprocate your feelings even though she's doing her best to maintain the friendship you previously had? Say that aloud to yourself until you realize that you are the idiot. I disagree. After telling him she only wanted to be friends, she shows up at his house uninvited. She had been going for years, but still, hangs around him all day, unlike the other many times she'd been there. Then the next time she shows up uninvited, she immediately latches on to the girl OP was with, and immediately tells her that OP asked her out recently? I'm a woman and only two explanations make sense for this woman's behavior. Number one, after telling OP she was only interested in remaining friends, she reconsidered. Now she wants to try dating OP, but is too scared or awkward to talk to OP about it. Number two, this girl is playing games. Now that she knows OP likes her, she's latching on to him to remind him of what he can't have and even going so far as to try to ward off any other girl from dating OP so she won't lose her hold over him. I think OP is not the idiot for disinviting this girl. She's just evil. Agree. If someone asked me out and I politely said no, and I showed up at their house, I wouldn't spend the entire time trying to talk to them and make them uncomfortable. On top of that, she also became more of the idiot when she told the new girl that he asked her out. For what reason? Someone called for. Okay, so I, female teen, have an older sister, teen, who I'll call Sally, who constantly steals from me and messes up my things. I've tried talking to my parents about it, but they shrug it off and say that sisters do things like that. It's gotten so bad that I have to hide or move valuable items out of the house and fear that she'll break or steal them. Three weeks ago, I received money from my aunt and friend for my birthday. I was excited because I've wanted AirPods for a while now, and I finally had enough money to get them. I kept the money in a box and put it in my drawer. About a week ago, I wanted to go to the gas station, so I went to get the money, but it wasn't there when I checked. So I went and asked my mom if she'd seen it, to which she replied yes. She told me that my sister went snooping in my room and wanted the money, and my mom didn't have the heart to say no, so she let her take it. I went to my sister's room and demanded she gives me my money back. She told me that she had already spent it and that I should have hidden it better if I didn't want it stolen. I was livid. I stormed to my room and stayed there for the rest of the day. Two days ago, while out shopping with my aunt, and she asked if I had gotten the AirPods that I'd been wanting, I told her no and that mom allowed Sally to take the money that I was going to use to buy it. My aunt was furious and called my mom, confronting her about it. My aunt scolded my mom and said I could stay the night with her. When I got back home to pack my things, mom was furious and threw money at me, asking if I was happy now that I made Sally feel bad. I ignored her, grabbed my things and left. While at my aunt's place, I received many nasty texts from family members saying I was in the wrong. My dad told me that he disagreed with what my mom and Sally did, but I didn't have to expose them to my aunt. I've been feeling extremely guilty, and I've been wondering if I was in the wrong. So, 
Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your sister is a thief. And both parents are enablers. I'm glad you have an adult who is treating you well. As long as your sister doesn't learn boundaries from your mom and dad, she will continue and surely will have it hard in life when she has to learn she doesn't get everything she wants and there are actually consequences for her behavior. I wonder if it works both ways. OP, feel free to take your sister's most valuable belongings and rummage through your mother's purse for money. If they ask or complain, say, everyone in the family apparently is a thief. I didn't want to be the odd one out. Exactly. Why does mom only care that Sally would be upset? So it doesn't matter to her that her other daughter is being robbed? Hmm. I wonder which one the golden child is. Not the idiot OP. I'm so sorry you're experiencing this one-sidedness from your parents. I'd be asking your aunt if you could stay with her. Parents who play favorites never realize the damage they do to their favorite or the non-favorite either. A phrase I saw recently, the golden child is forever a child. Your sister won't receive or learn consequences, so she won't learn to be a functional adult. As painful as it is right now, you're actually going to come through this better off. So hold strong. Your instinct to trust and tell your aunt was spot on. I wonder whether there's a similar dynamic between your mom and aunt. My husband is out of a job, has been for months now, and doesn't have any money because he spent it all on gaming gear and animals. I'm the breadwinner right now and was recently given a work from home job. We have two kids that understandably make a lot of noise. So there's not a quiet spot in the house except the bedroom. But my husband refused to let me work from there and said that it makes me look unprofessional and he doesn't want to be restricted from this space. I asked him if he'd let me take his gaming room and turn it into an office temporarily. He said no. I fought with him and ended up moving his gaming stuff into the bedroom. He found out and lost his temper. I told him he left me no choice, especially after I offered a compromise to share the room but he said no since he plays at random times. He kept yelling at me, calling me irresponsible and a dictator. I firmly told him that this was a part of the house, that it's my space too, but he said, no, 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 your space is the kitchen. This pushed me to lash back at him and he left, but said by the time he got back, everything needed to be put back. He came home after drinking heavily, so I didn't want to fight with him. He then kept ranting about wanting his room back, even after I tried to convince him to play in the bedroom all he wanted. Yet he's not having it and wants the atmosphere his gaming room has. Am I the idiot for this? Or is he being unreasonable? I'll give him the room back if it turns out that I'm wrong. Not the idiot. A space for working trumps an entire space for playing video games. Besides, while you're working, he's taking care of the kids and housework since he's unemployed, right? Saying you belong in the kitchen is such a degrading comment. My God, this sealed the deal for me. You're raising three kids. I'm a gamer myself, but if I were a stay-at-home dad, I'd be doing everything to make it easier for her while looking for a damn job. Then bro said your space is the kitchen? I have no words. You might want to evaluate your marriage with this guy. Not saying divorce. Actually, I kind of am, but this dude needs a lesson. Unemployed long term, trying to keep you from doing your job, the one that brings in the money, spending his time and money on gaming, coming home drunk. What exactly is this dude bringing to the table other than laziness, entitlement and temper tantrums? Give him a month and make it a deadline for him to make a real effort at finding a job and couples therapy or a divorce. Good luck.